We're very pleased to invite Dr. Luke Helmer of the Blue Marine Foundation to give the next presentation. I am the scientific officer for the Blue Marine Foundation and I primarily work on the Solent Oyster Restoration Project. So you can see the area that we're working in in the background there. Um, we have done outreach um, across most age groups who we were just saying other than kind of high schools. Um, so all the way from primary up to senior citizens. Um, but today I'm going to be focusing on the primary school and using a couple of the case studies. Um, and I've just put um, a couple of the other logos on there. So we had from the University of Portsmouth um, for one of these outreach events um, that worked really well. Um, and um, oysters offer a fantastic array of different ways of explaining how important the marine environment is. So um, a really good organism to work with. Um, today I'm going to talk about a bit who, a bit about who we are, who Blue is, um, who we've been working with, how we've been working, um, some of the lessons that we've learned so far, um, where we're looking to take it in the future, some of the top tips that we've got, and then um, some time for questions at the end. Um, so Blue's a marine conservation charity uh, working to secure marine protected areas tackle unsustainable fishing and develop models of more sustainable fishing methods um, and the final two points there are the, the points that are kind of relatable to the work that I'm going to be talking about is restoring marine habitats and connecting people with the sea uh, which fits really nicely within this outreach. Um, so our oyster outreach team um, is comprised by myself there if anyone hasn't seen me um, an action shop because I haven't got a glamour shot like the rest of the team um, we've also got um, Sophie Locke, who is our science and education officer, uh, Jacob Keen Hammerson, who's our Solent project manager, and Morvan, who's our senior UK projects manager. Um, I'd also like to take the time to thank uh, Dr. Graham Mallion, um, Zoe Holbrook, Eric Harris Scott, and Amy Munro for their assistance during the day that a few of these pictures were taken from. Um, so uh, our focus age group is the primary school level. So in the UK, that's key stage two, years three to six. Um, and these students are between seven and 11 years old. Um, and we've currently been working quite heavily with one school in the area, Wickle Primary School. Um, they're very up on their sustainability, environmental teaching and practices, um, growing your own vegetables, things like that. So they're kind of offered a, a fantastic school to start this with um, to develop in a way that when we can go to other schools that maybe aren't so up on that kind of ecological understanding um, and we've used a couple of teaching methods so far so our first one was our classroom based learning uh, where we went into the school and I'll tell you a bit about that in a second and then we had a second uh, section which was our hands-on field trip so as Feline was mentioning earlier, it's quite hard, um, particularly with this species being subtitled, to explain to kids the importance of it and actually show them and get it physically in their hands. Um, and some of the methods that we've been doing actually enable us to bring the marine environment out onto land to, to show them that. Um, so our classroom-based learning um, comprised of a whole day event, um, first of which was our whole school assembly. Um, so we went in in the morning, spoke to the whole school, we gave them an, a brief overview of the oceans, uh, their importance, um, some of the main issues they're facing, climate change, loss of biodiversity, things like that. And then we spoke about what we do as an organisation to resolve these issues, some of the cool creatures that we work with, um, fun facts about them. Um, and then we showed them some underwater, underwater baited video um, from one of our other projects in Lyme Bay as well, um, which got them really engaged. And you can see before we've been finished, you know, a few hands up in the audience as well. Um, so that was to the whole school. Um, the next, we moved into year six um, and we had a session with them. Um, so that was a morning and an afternoon session where we just repeated what we did. Um, we started with a lesson plan, so gave them an overview of what habitats are, what ecosystems are, uh, their importance, what they provide to the different organisms that live in them. Um, so similar to what Corinna was saying. And then we also spoke about what happens when you lose a habitat and how you go about restoring that lost habitat. Um, a second part of that was kind of the ecosystem services that 
uh, oysters and other organisms provide to those habitats. Um, we got them thinking about that um, using quite an interactive game. So the pitch you can see in the middle, um, our string game, um, we gave each of the students a, a different tag. Um, one was sunlight, one was detritus, primary producers, things like that. Um, and each of those groups, um, they then were given different bits of string and attached to uh, the relevant other tags. Um, so I've got a diagram here. Um, I'm not sure how happy the kids were that got detritus when we explain what that was to them. Um, but um, it gave them an idea of how the ecosystem is interconnected. And then we moved through each of those tags and told them to drop their strings and see what connections are lost to get them thinking about that interconnectivity um, and ended by ending the sun and then everything is lost. Um, the second part of the session was um, incorporating maths into that as well. So thinking about uh, water filtration and mortality rates. So we gave them uh, a few different sheets um, from our work that we've been doing, uh, real data, getting them to think about why the mortality varies throughout the year and why more oysters might be dying in the summer after spawning, things like that. So get them thinking about those other connections as well. Uh, we also then ran an after school drop in session. Um, so this was for parents and guardians or other siblings that weren't in the lessons that wanted to come and have a look and ask a few more questions. Um, so we had uh, a generic kind of project stand. Um, and I know my mum's on the call. I have to thank her for helping me to make these large cardboard cut out oysters, um, which we then cut out smaller organisms and stuck on those to give the kids an idea of uh, the biodiversity associated with them and then we got them to, to draw a live kind of oyster reef as it developed uh, on a separate sheet. Uh, we did take some live oysters in as well which um, the kids all really enjoyed and we had a question and answer stand as well so for the adults that wanted to to get involved. Uh, the next bit uh, which was the really fun bit uh, was the hands-on field trip um, so 70 of the primary school kids came down um, to Portsmouth Harbour in the Camber Dock. Half of those went up into the sailing team building. I'll show you some bits about that later. Um, and the other half came down to us on the pontoon. Um, so because we only had one pontoon to access, we put that half into another half. So half were on the pontoon and half did a shore activity. Um, and I, I guess this picture kind of summarizes that day quite nicely, uh, providing them with a, an in-hands experience. Um, we love this picture, it's one of the ones we use quite often. Um, so what we did is the, the guys that were down on the pontoon, we pulled our key shifts up. So this is one of the ways that we're able to bring the marine environment out onto land so that the kids can actually see it firsthand. Um, we used a net underneath the cages so that we would catch any uh, fish and mobile fauna as well. Um, and we gave each team uh, a cage to look at, count how many oysters were alive and look at the biodiversity associated with that. Um, so we gave them a score sheet as well uh, with a few cautions on there. So any that might pinch, nibble or sting you kind of have a, a red exclamation mark. Some that might scratch because they've got um, sharp parts. So the barnacles um, and the tube worms have yellow. Um, and then probably the biggest mistake I made is telling them that the sea squirts might squirt you um, and as soon as they found out they could be ended into a bit of a western with them shooting each other with sea squirts um, but very entertaining um, and we kind of gave them a, a, a point system um, giving them an idea of some of the organisms that might be more frequent or more important um, and some of the predators or um, invasive species were given negative points and at the end of the day the, the winner's got a prize um, whilst they were doing that, the other groups were up on the shore um, doing a game where they were got, getting the kids active, um, running across um, the apron of the area and writing down any species that they thought lived in the solum. Um, and I think this picture kind of epitomises the kids quite nicely. They, um, they scoop up information um, like a whale shark um, and that was kind of shown by the change in perception. So at the beginning of the day, before we did any of the activities, we asked them uh, what species we they thought lived in the Solent. 
um, and we did get some sensible answers, crabs, other things like that. Um, but some of the ones that stuck out a little bit more uh, was Great White Shark, Nemo, SpongeBob, and Patrick. Um, but by the end of the day, um, they'd absolutely taken on board everything we said to them. And one of the kids came up to me and said, uh, my favorites were the Star Ascidians. Um, so for us, that was an absolute win, um, a fantastic result. And you can see we're absolutely delighted by that. Um, so again, um, importance of taking pictures, um, some more of the biodiversity shown here. So again, the net works really well in getting some of those mobile fauna that might otherwise fall out of the cages. Um, but a few of the things that we have learned from that to consider, um, most of these are kind of generic to working with kids anyway. Um, the health and safety, making sure that you have enough life jackets so that all the kids can actually access the pontoon at one time. Um, adequate insurance, things like that, the, the dull side of that. Um, making sure that you maintain engagement. So having that activity on the shore meant that the kids weren't just staring at all the other kids counting all the organisms. Um, and making sure that firstly, it's a manageable number of students, but then how are you gonna make it engaging for that number of students? Um, and probably one of the most important um, is actually getting the parent or guardian permissions for photos before we do any of the activity and then we're able to use all of the fantastic images um, that were taken on the day uh, in presentations like this. Um, so looking to the future and how we want to develop this, uh, we want to move the program forward, um, again, incorporating other age groups, tailoring it to the different curriculums, um, but very much with the STEM subjects at the heart of that. So the biology, the ecology and the carbon cycling kind of things fitting in within the science. Um, working with sailing teams and sailing charities worked really well um, with developing their understanding of technology. We can also incorporate aquaculture techniques in that side of things. And then in terms of engineering, cage, reef design and the mass, there's loads you can do with that in terms of water quality, mortality, larval counts. Um, so again, oysters provide a, a fantastic way of incorporating all of those subjects. Um, Sophie's then been working really hard recently um, to enable us to record the impact that we're having with these kids with tailored questionnaires. So we'll do a before questionnaire and an after, um, and they've got ways of analyzing that so that we can actually see what impact we're having. Um, on a larger scale, we're then working with the networks to develop downloadable material. Um, I think we've got a call tomorrow actually um, about how we're going to do this. Um, we've also been using examples of fairly well-established schemes over in the States and other areas. Um, a great example of this is the Billion Oyster Project. They've got a fantastic um, education and outreach structure um, and they've got loads of material that they've been very kind in, in sharing with us. Um, and as we move forward, um, we're looking to develop shelf collection schemes. So when we're bagging and cleaning and preparing that shell, we can also incorporate school and, and other uh, organisational visits to that um, where we can give them lectures beforehand and then actually get them hands on as well. Um, so as I said, uh, we worked with the 1851 Trust um, during this day. So the kids that weren't on the pontoon at the time went up into the, onto the tech deck um, at the sailing team's headquarters. Um, they were given lessons on the work that was going on with invasive species out in the Caribbean, so lionfish, and, and again, teaching them about the ecological effect that that can have on native species. And then they got to play around with all the really cool kit um, that the sailing teams have up there. Um, so here's a, a few pictures from that day. So it's giving them uh, a whole range of learning experiences um, throughout the day. Um, so a few of the top tips that we've got um, from the experiences that we've had so far, um, by far the most important is to make it fun and engaging. Um, as you can see by the looks of it, um, all those kids had a really exciting day. Um, but also learn a lot throughout the day. Um, and using a variety of teaching methods, so the visual, the audio, um, the written, um, all help to engage all kids that learn in different manners. Um, again, tailoring the content to the different age groups is extremely important. Um, and hopefully as a network, we'll be able to do that. Um, 
also obtaining again permissions prior to the event means that we can use all these fantastic pictures um there's a few throughout we've, had, we've seen we've had to blur uh, because we didn't do that so that's one of the lessons that we've learned and once you've done that make sure to take lots of photos um, and then you can use them in presentations um, and always being prepared um, kids of this age group make you think on your feet um, and ask some very entertaining questions um, that you have to think quite quickly about um, so thank you very much for listening. Um, please feel free to follow us on all the social media platforms. We tweet quite a lot about um, all of the outreach activities that we do. Um, and for anyone that has kind of any more in-depth questions, I've put all of our email addresses on there. Um, for the educational side of things, Sophie's probably the best one to get in touch with. And then for more generic information, our website on there as well. Thank you very much.